With its factory tuning and data center DNA, an Intel 730 series SSD is an amazing choice for gamers and performance enthusiasts. Now, Gigabyte never really caught my attention with their peripherals in the past, and that's the reason we haven't covered them much. But this one right here is a little bit different. This is the Avia Uranium Wireless Gaming Mouse with Ghost Macro Station. And there are some things about it that are moderately interesting. So the mouse itself has a 6500 DPI Twin Eye Gaming Laser Sensor. It can handle a 1000 Hz polling rate, the maximum that you can do with USB 2. It can handle 50 hours of continuous battery life with its two AA batteries. I mean, you can easily swap them out in an emergency or whatever else the case may be, but you don't even have to do that in an emergency because it's got a nice lightweight cord here that you can go ahead and run to the mouse and you can actually use it as a wired mouse while it charges. None of these things are really groundbreaking, but the groundbreaking thing is the Ghost Macro Station right here that actually has a full-on OLED display that you can use to navigate the uh, onboard menus and make a ton of changes to the mouse itself without even firing up the software. But First, let's take a bit of a visual tour of the mouse itself. So at the front, we've got the charging port that plugs into that nice lightweight cable I talked about before. On the right-hand side, we find not a whole lot of anything other than a slightly textured, but still a little bit more slippery than I'd like plastic finish. At the back, we find its butt, so to speak, okay? And then on the left-hand side, we've got four G buttons, two of which are bound to forward and back by default, two of which are completely unbound, but any of which you can bind to whatever you could possibly want. On the bottom, we find a couple of slippy pads, four to be precise. There are some extra ones in the box, should you so require, as well as that 6500 DPI Twin Eye Laser Sensor. We've also got a connect button, which you probably won't even need to use unless something disastrous happens, an on-off switch, and those two nickel metal hydride rechargeable batteries that are included with the mouse. A very nice touch. On the top we find a scroll wheel that also supports tilt functionality, something I'm not a huge fan of because my lazy mouse posture causes me to accidentally hit it all the time, but lots of people really like it, as well as a rocker switch right here that you can use for on-the-fly DPI adjustments or whatever you want, a wheel controller lock that you can use to control the wheel lock that changes it from being a mouse wheel to being navigation for this right here. And finally, a profile switching button. What I have to say about the ergonomics are a couple of things. On the side and these ones to the left of your index finger, they're all surprisingly easy to reach. I particularly like the layout of G4. It's a very large button and you can either press it with the tip of your thumb or just roll onto it with the base of your thumb. Pretty much anyone should be able to access it too. However, the bu buttons under the palm do continue to baffle me. These ones make a little bit more sense because it's just a profile switcher and then like a navigation lock here. So presumably you're not gaming while you're like configuring your mouse or whatever else. So it's better than usual, but I still don't particularly like them. And then on the right hand side, the thing that bothered me here was that the mouse is just too heavy to claw grip. And then unfortunately, even with my small hands, my pinky hangs off the side of the mouse if I try to palm it. So I really just had a hard time gripping the mouse in a way that was that comfortable. And it's unfortunate that it has that particular drawback because there are some other things about it that are really cool, many of which pertain to the uh, Ghost Macro Station itself. So. Moving on to that, it has an extremely bright, easy to read OLED display that can have a ghost logo on it or your own creation, whether it's a bitmap or even hand drawn on with the mouse itself, something that I spent more of the time, you know, while I was working on this review doing than I probably should have. It's got onboard memory for macros and gigabyte claims and it's like a patent pending technology for flawless performance. Speaking of performance, I had absolutely no complaints about it. I didn't notice any lag or any jumping even on a high resolution 2560 by 1440 monitor. Uh, it's got a live editing mode. This is cool. No software required. All you have to do is press that wheel lock button and then you can use the mouse wheel as a D-pad to navigate forward back, up and down through the menus, then you click to confirm your changes and you can change all kinds of stuff, like DPI values, you can edit profiles, switch profile, well, you can do that through the mouse, but you can, could switch profiles if you wanted to. You can assign basic remapped functionality, key mapping functionality, so you can bind keyboard functions to your mouse and you can even assign macros and all that kind of stuff. So software is available and includes more functionality, such as more granular DPI control and a pretty robust macro editor, 
as well as the aforementioned drawing utility for the screensaver. <clears throat> uh, but if you, you don't actually need to use the software to have really good control of the mouse all the time if you don't want to. I did mention before the nice lightweight charging cord. I can't emphasize this enough. That's a really good feature to have for a mouse that's supposed to be wireless most of the time. And then finally, the little Avia logo on the bottom has five different colors which indicate which profile you are operating in. This is kind of cool. As much as I might have complained about the ergonomics of the mouse for myself, on their website they actually have a hand comfort guide and do recommend a hand size. So um, I'm, usually I'd call Luke down to be like, yeah, here's what his hand looks like on it, here's what my hand looks like on it. You know what, just head over to their website, see if it's a, if it's a good fit for you. And on their website also what I noticed is that there's a lot of marketing around the 4K readiness of this mouse. Um, something that I thought was a little bit weird, but is actually a very interesting point. When I finally upgraded from my MX Duo, I only did it because I went from my CRT monitor, which I ran at uh, 1280 by 1024 or 960 or whatever it was to maintain the proper aspect ratio. I went from that to a 1920 by 1200 monitor and I was like, oh, the DPI is not high enough. So that is an argument for higher DPI mice. However, this one isn't particularly more 4K ready than other high DPI mice, and I just wanna make sure that I clarify that. Also included in the box is a cleaning cloth, the extra mouse feet that I mentioned before, uh, an Avia, you know, club, B and Avia club membership card, as, mouse as well as a user's guide, and then the rechargeable batteries that I have in the mouse already. Guys, thank you for watching. Like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it. Leave a comment, it's uh, linked below the video in the forum thread to discuss this video and let us know if you have any feedback for us or if there's anything in particular you want to say about this product itself. And uh, yeah, we've also got a link to our support link where you can buy cool t-shirts that help support us as well as uh, send us monthly contributions which help us make more videos. And finally, this one's a really easy one, just how to change your Amazon link so that every time you buy something there it gives us a little kickback. That helps a lot. And I think I'm done now. Don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos. Thank you.